Now back, he's still in the Maglia Rosa virtually, but if this rate of knots of loss of seconds continues, he will not be in the Maglia Rosa on the podium. Wilco Kelderman, 140 down, and there goes Dennis. There goes Dennis. It's time for Gagan Hart to go. It's time for Hindley to follow him. Gagan Hart is within 58 seconds of the Maglia Rosa. 58 seconds with still 10 kilometres to go. Rowan Dennis, man of the match. Ten kilometers to the line, and a first ever male Giro d'Italia finish in Laghi di Cancano. And I've all been watching the images of what happened at the women's Giro last year. Tailgate and Hart now gaining time like nobody's business alongside Jaya Hindley on Wilco Kelderman. Gagan Hart and Ineos Grenadiers have come from a long way back. They've been able to do this without pressure. It's a different story for the Australian here sat on his wheel. It's not been a particularly pleasant day, I would imagine, for Jaya Hindley since halfway up the Stelvio. Some were looking really good. They had this man in the virtual Maglia Rosa. They still do, but he's now 40 seconds of a lead in front of Theo Gegenhardt, who took three bonus seconds at the bottom, moved above Hindley in the GC, and Subweb's grand plan that was excellently executed might be about to come undone. Tell you what, Bilbao and uh, Fulsang have recovered a little bit. Um, they're only, you know, just over a minute, or they're just coming up to um, Kelderman. Kelderman. So, Kel Kelderman, he's going backwards so he quickly, is, Brian. He he's lost a minute since the bottom of the descent. And I think that a lot of that is to do with the, the effort he had to put in on the, the Stelvio, the cold descent as well. He was holding it for a time being. It's, um, it looks as if it's could be over for Kelderman here, and a surprise to see that uh, Bill Sang and Bilbao coming up to him, and he'll be demoralised from this. There are only two seconds between Tail Gagan Hart and Jai Henley. Now what's going to happen? Sorry, Brian. Let's he's just gone. watch what happens here. He's oh, gone. they're going straight past him. They're going straight past him. Oh, he's gone. He is gone. Wilco Kelderman is losing the Giro d'Italia, and he was never actually physically in the pink jersey. He was in it virtually, he still is, but he's not going to last long. And all of the science, all of the planning, all of the everything, Brian, and it comes down to putting your coat on. Yeah, it could be as simple as that. Freezing cold in the descent and really struggling from it. This man as well, he's doing a good job. Tail, for the moment, just has to kind of concentrate on taking time. He just, he'll, he'll drag Jai Hindley up. Jai will not give him a turn, so he just has to concentrate. Two seconds separate them. They're having a bit of a conversation now. Two seconds better off is the man in the right tail gigging hard. You've got 10, 6 and 4 in the finishing line, of course. You've got another mountain stage three times up Sestrier on Saturday and then the time trial which favours tail gigging hard. Unfortunately for this man here, he looks as if he is losing this Giro d'Italia. It must be difficult for his teammate Hindley as well because he can't be seen to be riding yet, even though personally he will want to be at the front. But once Kelderman's out of the picture, maybe the game can change and they can try and make sure that they keep putting time into everybody else. Right now there's only two seconds between them. Those bonus seconds at the bottom. It was a one-second lead for the man in white at the start of the day. Now it's a two-second lead for the man in the navy. The man in the navy, if this carries on, could well be moving into pink. The man in the white could be staying in white, or it could be the other way around. Remember, Hindley could have saved so much here that he could be the strongest. Let's not forget that. But he's had the extra stress. Some web still have a chance to save the day, but they have been bruised and battered after dishing out the disappointment and the punishment to everybody else. Now, this climb to Lagedy Cancono has 21 hairpins. It's a long way up, and we go well high up again to almost 2,000 metres. 1,954 to be precise. Kelderman has to settle in, 151. 48 seconds still in the virtual leads. But you can see him just possibly recovering a little bit there. In the, uh, after the descent, he, he really struggled to get into a rhythm. And he'll be slowly warming up a little bit on, the, on this climb. And 
you know, he must have got demoralised when Phil sang and Bilbao passed, and if he can just get to them, then he might have, you know, a couple of allies to, to try and help him, but, you know, just... He seemed to hit that climb and his just legs just went to went to jelly, but he does look as if he's not capitulated completely, but you have to feel for him. This man, however, Jai Henley, ridden another terrific stage, looking even better. If he, he just has to hold on to the this man here, Tail Gagan Hart, and, and Jai Henley could be winning this stage today. I know, yet again, late into the evening, down under you will all be watching cheering on the man in white another little word from Gagan Hart another little look back in a rather perverse sense they'll be enjoying this despite the effort this is a position that neither thought that they would be able to dream of being in two and a half weeks ago when we began the Giro d'Italia yes they're top riders yes they're big promises but now they'll ride up there with the very best full sang and Bill Bow and Bill Bow riding himself closer to the podium. Kelderman's come, he, he must have got warm again, but he's not leaking as much time now. 58 seconds between, um, in the virtual, between uh, Tail Gagan Hart and um, Kelderman. He thought at the bottom when Phil Sang and Bill Bow passed it, he, he's completely gone, but it looks as if he's got into a bit of a rhythm now and go through that kind of difficult part. Brian, with eight kilometres to go, just for everybody watching at home, when we get to that at the top and it becomes all very complicated, what is the number that we have to look out for? What is the magic figure for Wilco Kelderman to come over the line within to pull on the Maglia Rosa, given that there are bonus seconds as well on the line? You can't give away more than uh, two minutes and 39 seconds on this climb. Um, so when the... Whoever it is, and you've got to, to factor in the, the 10, 6 and 4 time bonuses as well, so... So that would be 2.29 two, for Gagan Hart? Yeah, if Gagan Hart wins, it'll be a 2.29. If it'll be a, a little bit less, if, uh, or a little bit more if, uh, if Jai Hindley wins. Dennis, after his man of the match performance, Kelderman at 1.39 with seven and a half k's to go, saving the day now. This Giro has been up, it's been down left and right, round plenty of roundabouts, and that's in a metaphorical sense. What a story we've had today. We'll be picking the bones of this for years to come. Stelvio promised, and after worrying it wasn't going to happen, it showed us why it is to be feared, why it is the mega mountain. And Wilco Kelderman might not yet be having too many nightmares about it. As things stand, with those numbers at the top of your screen, and with seven kilometers still to ride, He's set to pull on the Maglia Rosa. Yeah, my mistake a, a little bit earlier. By taking the, um, the bonus sprint there and Jai Henley taking third, that's a two seconds bonus, and Jai actually was one second in front. So the difference between Tail Gagan Hart and uh, Jai Henley is only one second in front, 10, 6 and 4 on, on the finishing line. And look at the time, Wilco Kelderman, 1.38. So he's holding it within about a minute now. So Kelderman has still got a bit of a fight here. Still seven kilometres to go. And it's still virtual by a, a matter of round about a minute as well for Kelderman. So an update on that message you'd be giving as a Tom Stumweb sports director. I guess that Hindley is not allowed to make a move here until the line because he doesn't want to put his own man out of the pink jersey. Right now, somewhere they're still in a brilliant position and they're taking the Maglia Rosa and it would be job done as far as their tactics today are concerned. But Hindley, for that reason, will not be allowed to attack Tail Gagan Hart. But he'd have to chase him if he goes. 
Yeah, I think for the moment, uh, Jai Henley just has to stay with uh, Tail Gagan Hart, try to take the stage, make sure he takes the, the maximum bonus. Kelderman just has to fight his own battle. It does look as if he has, because he, he lost a lot of time when we came off the descent. He was holding it about 40 seconds, lost a lot of time way around Rowan Dennis put the, the hammer down. And then when we hit the bottom of the climb, he just looked a bit shaken. But uh, Kelderman coming round a little bit and um, is holding and is actually getting better as this climb goes up. Whether Tail Gagan Hart is holding something back, but I don't think he can. I think he has to go all the way. Vincenzo Nibali is about to be caught by the Maya Rosa group. That means he is at 4 minutes 28 from the front of the race. Bilbao and Fulsang are gaining. 117 now from Gagan Hart, who is still with Hindley. 10% gradient. Maximum of 11% on this climb. So we wondered about the, the sports directors from somewhere. What about Ineos Grenadiers and, and Teo Gagan Hart? Does he have to try and push on a bit more here? Or is there still enough left, life left in this race yet? He has to. He has to push on. This is um, trying to, to gain enough time to, to try and take the, the pink jersey. So you have to kind of forget about the stage. Not unless they've said, look, guarantee the stage. But you have to go big. And I think uh, Teo is trying to go big. He's trying to take the, the jersey. Even if he fails, the top three will, will be very, very close. Going into a final mountain stage on Saturday and then the time trial. Has to think more about the jersey, doesn't he? Because right now, he could ride like that and think about the stage, but still not win the stage because Hindley's on his wheel. No longer on the wheel of Peo Bilbao is Jakob Fulsan. And Bilbao is finding himself on a very good day. He's on his way up in the top five. And he's heading to the podium. Not quite on it yet, but he's moving from fifth to fourth right now. Yeah, there was a couple of days he was starting to struggle a little bit. It seems to have come good. Four and a half minutes then to Almeida. And apart from those few who have shone so far, you have to say that Almeida is still with the best in the world. He's still with the best of the rest, Brian. And yes, he's going to lose the pink jersey, but maybe a final time to show some appreciation for him here. He's put up a, a brilliant, brilliant strong defence as Gagan Hart is trying to press on on that hairpin, and he's giving it a bit of a dig now. Hindley is following well there. Six kilometres to the line. And it is Teo Gagan Hart in the position of his life. The same can be said for Jai Hindley here. The Kelderman now virtually 107 ahead. So he's actually got better on the, uh, the first start of this climb. Just when we thought, when we came to the bottom of the climb, when uh, he got passed by Balbao. Balbao and... Um, Full sang, we thought, that's it, he, he's gone, but he seems to have come round a little bit now. It wasn't a good look, was it? Again, you worry at the effect it might have a couple of days down the line as well when we get to Sestria, if he's been that cold and struggling that bad for that amount of time. But that's something that they will have to affront when, when they come to it. The good thing is, is he's got his rhythm back and you, know, you can see that the riders warming up, you see them sweating a little bit now. It just would have been very difficult for uh, Kelderman being in his own and the whole descent, throwing off his jacket. And then with uh, Rowan Dennis really pushing hard, it was always going to be difficult for uh, Kelderman to take any time back. He was always going to lose time. But he looks to be saving it for the time being. 135. Well, they're into a series of hairpins now that really doesn't finish until two kilometers to go. That's where the King of the Mountains points are dished out, by the way. That is officially the top of the climb. And then it flattens out a bit, as Masnada now is struggling to hold on with the pink jersey group. And given all the work he's done for Almeida today, Masnada has been really impressive again. Tenth before today at 4.26. As they say in Italian now, staccato, dropped. Yeah, 
Bilbao is gaining 51 seconds within a minute. There is Jai Hindley. Man from West Australia with a man from East London. Little conversation again there. 21 hairpins to the top before we get to Lagi di Cancano. Daniel Bilbao on one of the best days of his GC career as well. And he has the podium in sight with Milan three days away now. He'll require something else, but he's putting himself in a good position to do so. Saturday stage not quite as difficult. What sort of impact will today have on Saturday? There is that to factor into, then the time trial on Sunday. Gagan Hart on the pedals again there with just under 5Ks to go. 3Ks to the top of the climb before it's flat. So 3 kilometers realistically, Brian, to make the difference. Still looks easy, Teal. Whether... Whether he's thinking more... You know, he wants this stage, he wants a second stage win. Another stage for Ineos. It doesn't look as if he's the... He's riding 100%. Keeps on chatting to um, Jai Henley behind. There's no real reason to do that because Jai is not going to ride at all. He's not going to help him. Jai's job is just to sit on tail gig and heart and, and try and take the stage win for, for Sunweb. So, while Kelderman, he's now 107. In a, in a virtual pink jersey, so he's, he's pulled it back just when we thought he looked really bad before we hit this climb, he is pulling it back. I think Tail will, will know this and possibly Tail thinking that um, he fancies another stage win. Oh, that was gaining quickly. 45 seconds for the man from Bahrain McLaren. He's gaining on Kelderman. He's gaining a lot on the Maya Rosa group. He's taking almost four minutes back on them. Started the day, remember, in fifth place. And he was at 312. So he's already rising above Almeida and all the other riders there in that group. There they are. Ken Steiner there. They haven't turned out they're having a good cheer, aren't they, Bahrain McLaren, to say that they haven't come with their full A team. Mikel Lander, of course, and what pulls us over at the Vuelta España. See, look Kelderman at the difference fights. here. Look at the difference here. Kelderman's fighting. Maybe it's just the, the way that Teo is. Hopefully we see his face here. It's hard for everybody at the moment, but it doesn't look as if he's really grimacing. He's really, you know, giving it 100%. He is going to probably have this stays the same, be around about a minute from the, uh, the pink jersey, maybe he does fancy trying to win a second stage and, and move on to the podium, as you say 1.9 kilometres to go is when this, this plane tops out and then it's flat and then it just kind of rises up towards the finishing line. How much time do you think that Kelderman could take or ship in a 15 kilometer time trial on Sunday. Flat one. Well, if, you, if I look back to the. Um, through my notes on the time trial, you know, the difference between Kelderman, I think it was 16 seconds um, Kelderman lost in Almeida, and 50 odd seconds was the. Uh, the time lost by uh, Teo Gagan Hart, so you would, you would think that Kelderman has shown already in this year's Giro that he's a better time trial. 53 seconds it was and 16 seconds in the favour of Kelderman. And it just goes to 55 seconds in the virtual lead, so with the final time trial, the way it's going at the moment, if Teo comes out fighting on the, on the Saturday stage, the mountain stays three times up Sestria, and you think he would. Then he's, if he's within one minute of the uh, the pink jersey, there's a, still another opportunity. 
So it started, the pendulum has started to sway a little bit more towards tail. He's pushing on a little bit more, and that's why the, the gap to Kelderman is, is, is going up a little bit now. But it doesn't look from where I'm sitting that they're going to gain enough time in Kelderman to take that pink jersey. And by the end of the day, the pink jersey will have a lead of possibly around about one minute, and it's probably favourite in the final time trial. One mountain stage still to go as well. But the last time we went over to Stelvio, we had a Dutch winner, didn't we? Tom Dumoulin won the Giro d'Italia that year. Wilco Kelderman is in the box seat right now, despite looking like he was in an awful condition. Quite clearly the cold affecting him. He was in a bad way. He was, there's no doubt about it. He didn't look good. He was throwing gels down his neck and... You know, hit the bottom of the climb and you know, the cold really hit him and you know he took a wee bit of time to warm up but he did warm up and thankfully for the, the, the sun web and Dutch support he, he has warmed up and it looks as if, as if now he's not going to to lose the, the Giro d'Italia, he's going to be still in with a, a great chance of winning it with uh, one mountain stage to go and one uh, time trial to go. That's the spectacular image of the Torri di Fraele, which is where we're heading now. That's the top of the climb before it levels out a little. You can see the lake stand in the background and the finish at Laghi di Cancano. Now Teo Gegenhardt still, still has Jai Hindley on his wheel. The Aussie sticking like glue to the Brit. They've both ridden wonderfully well today. Two of them look good. I know it's been a hard day for everybody. You know, about 207 kilometers, massive climb of the Stelvio, but the two of them looking good, and the two of them, you know, deserve the stage win here. Well, the Giro d'Italia has been flipped on its head today and will still be in play going into the last few days. Helderman's gap just opens up a little bit again, 145. And looks in every image to be really fighting the bike and everything. I guess the thing that will be in his mind as well, and his teammates' mind, is if he's been dropped today, how will he perform on Sestria? Two days further down the line. Luckily, it's a sprinter stage, a flat stage tomorrow, so these riders have got good recovery. It's been a you know, hard three days, 4,000 metres of climbing a couple of days ago. 5,600 yesterday, 5,800 today. So it's been tough. So that they'll be thankful of the, an easier day tomorrow. <laughs> 500 metres from the top for Teo Gagan Hart and Jai Hindley with Pale Bill Bar now at 36 seconds. Another of the rides of the day from the Basque Man. The two champions here, Gagan Hart and Hindley, stand to gain the most in the GC. The big loser is, of course, Joao Almeida. And the new Malladosa, for the moment, looks to be Wilco Kelderman, but he is starting to lose time again. Another dig here from Gagan Hart. It's creeping up to 155 now, Brian, another 10 seconds. Hindley on the wheel and still looking good. Remember, bonus seconds at the bottom of this climb meant that Gagan Hart leapfrog Hindley. Now leads by a second after trailing by a second. So he would be the second man on GC. But with 10, 6 and 4 bonus seconds on the line, realistically it's the stage winner between these two that will be the highest in the general classification. That's regardless of what Kelderman does here. So, two kilometers to go. Egan Hart takes the points for the King of the Mountains. Into the tunnel now, when they emerge, they'll see the lakes, the Laghi di Canca. This is Pale Bilbao. What a warrior. What a ride. Soldiering on right towards the podium. Not quite there yet, but he's a man who could be just about in touching distance when we head to Milan. the umpteenth spectacular image taken 
on what has been a stage for the ages. Once again, riders from the new generation at the front. Just looking two minutes now to Kelderman, and with the uh, factor in the bonuses at the end, this could be about 30 seconds between the top um, top three in the podium. Kelderman starting to swing again. And it's no wonder he made quite an effort to get going once more, overcome the cold. And it's Gagan Hart who's riding for every second here. Henley, of course, he's going to try and do what he can. He's going to follow and try and win the stage. That means that whatever would happen to his teammate, he'd still be ahead, he'd still be in the lead. Stromweber riding at the best they can here tactically. There's no question about that. The problem for them is that Kelderman's legs have given way a little bit. 800 metres to go now. It has been quite the day at the Giro d'Italia. We expected that big verdict. The jury were out, weren't they, throughout the climb. And they are about to return with something that isn't quite resounding. There are still doubts going ahead to the final couple of days. This race is still up in the air. The 103rd Giro d'Italia is not disappointing. We've waited and waited for the GC to be battled out. And we're still going to get it right to the final day. These two men are suddenly involved and they're going to be close to the Maglia Rosa. It's gone from the shoulders of Joao Almeida. It's going to pass, we think, to Wilco Kelderman. But also Teo Gagan Hart and Jai Hindley are going. 200 metres to go. His Majesty the Stelvio still reigns supreme. What a stage it's been. And it's Gagan Hart now going to the line, but Hindley's going to try and come around him. Jai Hindley's there. Hindley in the wide on the left. The Australian going to the line. Some web have it. Some web have it. Jai Hindley is a stage winner on the Giro d'Italia. And it is a day we will never ever forget as long as we watch cycling what a finish what a win some web still have the lead the question now is who's pulling on the Maglia Rosa two minutes and 30 seconds uh, Kelderman needs to get in it was just over two minutes in the run in but wow we're going to see uh, going into the last weekend's top three still within 30 seconds of each other Pale Bill Bow take a bow ridden his heart out all day and this after riding the Tour de France three weeks in France but getting better as the days go by in Italy 45 seconds down and he'll take four bonus seconds too Jai Hindley though a stage winner at the Giro d'Italia and it's another day for WA Paul Sang has shown some form what might have been Losing those big domestiques on days one and two. Crashes, punctures, problems. One off day. He's certainly been on it today, though. Jakob Fulsang to come down. And we wait as that clock ticks by. Fulsang to come across the line. And Brian, reminders of the number again for Wilco Kelderman. Because Jai Hindley has won the stage. Some web are going to be in control of the race. But is it going to be Hindley? Is it going to be Kelderman? Two minutes and 30. He's within 300 metres. So it does look as if he's going to go on to the uh, the pink jersey with uh, Jai Hindley in second and uh, Tail Gagan Hart. But it's all going to be very close and they're all going to be within 30 seconds of each other. 150 to go. It is ticking by. Oh, it's going to be less than 30 seconds. Wilco Kelderman on a bittersweet day. The day he put the team to work the day they exploded the race but the day his legs gave way and even up to the finish here the seconds are counting away it is going to be Wilco Kelderman who is the new leader of the Giro d'Italia but his lead is way for thin with three days to go his teammate will be in second place in a handful of seconds and just behind that the Ineos Grenadiers will have Teo Gagan Hart we've got a flat day tomorrow and then Sestriere on Saturday, time trial on Sunday. It's going to go down to the final few pedal strokes in Milan. Brian Smith, what a Giro d'Italia. And it's not over yet. You know, by my calculations, 
that means that um, Kelderman will lead this race roughly about 13 seconds uh, oh. from uh, Jai Hindley. So somewhere, great stage win, first and second, but the uh, tail Gagan Hart only 16 seconds off the pink jersey. Vincenzo Nibali, is this the end of an era? It's certainly giving us that feeling. But Supreme on the Stelvio, despite difficulties, somewhere. They took it to work. We know that the Ineos Grenadiers and that man of the match performance from Dennis has really shook up the race. From a neutral point of view, that is going to provide the entertainment for the final few days. Wilco Kelderman leads the Giro. Two young men, his teammate Hindley, and then of course Tailgate and Hart, find themselves in dreamland with a chance to take the Maglia Rosa. Losing the Maglia Rosa, and after a fight that's lasted a fortnight, is Joao Almeida. He's going to ride in here with Pernsteiner on the back, a former champion Nibali in the centre. The Chao Jao, it's been quite a ride. The Koenig Quickstep have ridden their hearts out. They've given everything. Portugal has been plastered in pink, but over four minutes down, and unless something particularly special happens now, Joao Almeida's challenge for the Giro d'Italia and probably the podium out of the picture. A warrior, a rider, a name for now and the future. Joao Almeida has come to the Giro d'Italia, has made a name for himself. Joao Almeida is about to seed the Maglia Rosa, but in such style. He has fought right to the last pedal stroke. Joao Almeida, take a bow. Loses the Maglia Rosa. Heartbroken, I'm sure. We won't forget the Stelvio. Unfortunately, neither will he. His challenge leaving itself on the mighty mountain and in Laghi di Cancano. How do we heck our heads around this? Ryan, I'm lost for words. Great stage. Well ridden. Sunweb. Jai Henley, per perfect stage in the end, just had the legs to come round, tail gigging hard, but like I said before, both of them deserve the stage. Okay, Jai Henley had the wheel of tail gigging hard the whole way up the hill, the climb there at the end, you know, just a, a shake of the head, but that's team tactics for you, there's nothing you can do, and it seems like Australia week because Rohan Dennis, what performance he put in today to put Tail Gagan Hart within 16 seconds or thereabouts of the uh, the pink jersey. But somewhere they're going to be lying first and second in the Giro d'Italia with a stage win which they deserved. The white jersey as well, but you know, still with a, a big weekend to come, we could still see some changes. Stage for the ages. The stuff of legend. And Jai Hindley now becomes legendary himself. Somewhere Beninios Grenadiers with the team who had the fortitude to take it on. They have been rewarded. No sixth win for Ineos. Somewhere, though, tactically played it perfectly. And even though Wilco Kelderman's legs might be slippy underneath, he's going to have a strange feeling because he's not been as he wanted to be. He's going to be going on to the podium as the new Maglia Rosa. Jai Hindley wins a superb, sublime, unforgettable stage of the Giro d'Italia. Stage 18 again goes to Western Australia. He beats the British Tail Gegenhart with Pale Bilbao, the Basque from northern Spain, at 46 seconds. Just looking at the stage result, they've rounded it up to um, 2 minutes and 18 seconds, which means that uh, top three within 15 seconds of each other.
Wilco Kelderman leads the Giro d'Italia by just 12 seconds from his teammate Jai Hindley. Tail Gegenhardt at 15, Bill Bowles at 119, Almeida at 216. It's all in play with three days to go.